So here we're going to have a look at addition reactions of alkenes. So unlike alkanes, alkenes are actually quite reactive. They really like to get involved and get, and get reacting with various substances. And that is because of this double bond, this double carbon-carbon bond that's present in all alkenes. So we know that carbon likes to form four covalent bonds when it's involved in bonding. And so if, it's involved in, if a carbon atom is involved in a double bond, then it's going to form two other, oh, well in this case it's going to form two other single bonds for a total of four bonds. Now, what often happens with this double bond is that uh, carbon atoms don't like to be in double bonds with one another. They, they would rather, they'd rather have four single bonds than a double bond and two single bonds. So th this carbon atom would rather have two uh, single bonds than this double bond here. So if we examine what exactly is going on in this double bond, we've got basically the two carbons are sharing two electrons each with one another. And so what we have is one bond here and one bond here and obviously we've still got uh, these bonds going out here and so to the first two electrons are these two inner electrons are belong to this carbon and these two outer electrons belong to two other atoms and the same with this carbon here now what happens in an addition reaction, which is probably the most common form of reaction that an alkene molecule will undergo, is that basically what happens is this double bond turns into a single bond. So we've got this carbon atom, and so this double bond becomes a single bond. And so each of these carbon atoms still have those two shared electron pairs, those two covalent bonds that were already formed. And then the electron from the middle, the, the, the remaining electron that was previously part of the double bond, comes out here. And what it does is it forms another, it forms another bond with another atom. So say we want to add maybe a chlorine atom. The chlorine atom will share an electron like that. And so what we end up with is we go from this to this. And maybe we've added a chlorine atom to each carbon atom. And so we end up with something a little like that. So obviously we've still got hydrogens here, assuming we had hydrogens up here. So what I've drawn here is an addition reaction between ethene and chlorine. So usually the way that that happens is that if we, if we go back, if we ignore the fact that we've skipped to this, uh, this result here, if we take ethene like this, or any alkene for that matter, and we mix it with uh, lots and lots of, for example, chlorine molecules. Now, chlorine molecules are good because chlorine atoms like to form bonds by sharing one electron. They are one electron short from a full outer shell, and so they like to form single covalent bonds. Uh, that, in that way, they're the same as all of the other halogens. So what happens if we, is if we mix an alkene with lots and lots of chlorine atoms or any other, sorry, chlorine molecules or any other halogen molecules for that matter, and we add energy to this, so we can either, either add, maybe we'll heat this mixture, or we'll, we'll shine lots and lots of UV light on this mixture and get it all excited. Then what happens is the chlorine molecules turn into chlorine atoms, so this bond disappears. We call these chlorine atoms, when they're unbonded, radicals, because they've got... Uh, they want to form bonds, they want to, f they want to gain an electron through one covalent bond to form a full outer shell of electrons. So they're, they're very reactive and they're really keen to, to form a bond somewhere. So what they do, they're no longer bonded with one another. So what these chlorine atoms like to do is they'll basically jump in onto one of the carbon atoms. And so what we end up with is, as I just drew, if only one chlorine uh, finds its way in, well, that's, that's actually... Uh, very important to be aware that, in fact, if a chlorine is going to come onto one atom, then another, at if a chlorine is going to join onto this carbon, therefore getting rid of the double bond, then another atom needs to join onto this carbon. And so, most likely, it will be chlorine in this case. Because uh, if, if this double bond turns into a single bond, because a chlorine is added to this carbon, then uh, this, this carbon still needs to have four bonds in total. So it needs to bond to a new atom as well. So we'll say that this chlorine jumps on as well. And what we end up with is what I just drew, 
we end up with just dichloroethane. Or one, two dichloroethane because the chlorines are on different carbon atoms. So that's a basic addition reaction. Now we can add lots of things. So we can say that we're adding a chlorine molecule across the, across the double bond in this reaction. Similarly, we can add any halogen molecule, or we can add things such as hydrochloric acid. So a hydrogen can go onto one carbon and a chlorine can go onto the other atom. So basically we can add any molecule, which is made up of two atoms, like hydrochloric acid is, and those, both of those atoms need to, uh, or they, they have to want to form single bonds. They have to be one electron short of having a full outer shell. So basically the halogens fit into that category, as well as uh, hydrogen atoms. So similarly, we could also add hydrogen atoms across this bond and we'd go from ethene to ethane. Now, another very uh, specific and important type of uh, addition reaction of ethene, so if we get rid of this, is one with steam or water. Now, what often happens, uh, the, this reaction is often used in, uh, in industry and uh, sort of big engineering uh, processes. So what we do is we have our ethene molecule, and what happens is a water molecule is uh, reacted with the ethene molecule. And this require, this happens under very, very specific conditions. It happens at 300 degrees Celsius, and it needs a very specific catalyst. It needs a solid phosphoric acid catalyst. And what happens is that the same way that the chlorine, atom, chlorine molecules broke into individual atoms and added across this bond here, what we get is we get the, the water molecule breaking into an OH group and a H group. And the H group will bond to one carbon and the OH group to the other carbon. And what we end up with is ethanol. So the hydrogen bonds to one carbon and the OH group or the hydroxyl group bonds to the other carbon and we form ethanol. So this is a very important reaction. It happens when we pass steam and uh, ethene over a solid phosphoric acid catalyst at a very high temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and we can produce ethanol. So we're going to look at an example now. We're going to look at how the different possible products that can be created. So obviously if we're adding something like chlorine, then chlorine, each chlorine atom is going to go to, eat, to the, each of the carbon. One chlorine atom will go to each carbon involved in the double bond. However, if we add something like hydrochloric acid, then the hydrogen can go to the one side and chlorine to the other side. Or they could switch sides. So chlorine could go to this side and hydrogen to the other side. So that's very important when we get to more complex uh, molecules as to the different possible products. So here we're going to look at I'm going to start off with methylpropane. So we've got to remember when we're drawing these sorts of structures that each carbon only forms four bonds. And therefore this carbon only has two hydrogens coming off it. This hydrogen, this carbon, sorry, will have no hydrogens because it's already formed four bonds. So this is methyl propane. We don't need any numbering because there's no ambiguity. Uh, no matter what the numbering is, it will always be. So the numbering will, if we were to number this molecule, it would always be the same, even if we move the double bond and, uh, and the methyl group. So methyl propane is our molecule. What we're doing is we're reacting it with a molecule of hydrochloric acid. And so we're going to look at the two possible products. So there are two possible products that could be formed from this. First one, we're going to say that the hydrogen goes onto this middle carbon and the chlorine atom goes onto this one here. So the first possible product that we would get, if that were to occur, would be uh, we'd have an extra chlorine here, we'd have an extra hydrogen here, and everything else would look the same. So we're going to call this, this is our longest carbon string, it's still three carbons. It's got a methyl group in the middle and the chlorine atom is uh, coming off the end carbon. So this is one 
chlorothiochloromethyl propane. So that is one of the possibilities for this reaction. So, so the, our product is down here. We've added methyl propane and hydrochloric acid to produce one chloromethyl propane. Now there is another possibility for the product of this reaction. If the hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom swapped positions on the uh, on where they bonded for where they bonded on the methyl propane molecule. So we could have, in fact instead have we've got our, we could have the chlorine atom going up into the middle carbon and the hydrogen atom going to that end carbon there. And so what that would look like would be a little something like this. And so we're going to have the chlorine in the middle. We'll have a methyl group up here and a methyl group over here. And so again, we've got our longest carbon chain is three carbons. We've got a methyl group on the middle from the middle carbon and we've got a chlorine now this time on the middle carbon and so that means we've got two chloromethyl propane. So these are the two possible products when we react hydrochloric acid with methyl propane. Note also that we're changing ene to ane in the propane part of this uh, of the name because we're getting rid of the double bond. So that is uh, basically all there is about the basic standard addition reactions of alkenes. So we're just adding a, uh, a diatomic molecule or a molecule containing two atoms. We're adding it across the double bond, meaning that one atom goes to each of the carbons involved in the double bond.